Hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne. I got a video for that Kimball, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how can you, the dependent and or loved one, get paid for taking care of a veteran. Make sure you stick around. Okay, so how can you, the dependent and or loved one of a veteran, get paid for taking care of a veteran? This is a benefit called the caregiver program, and it falls under VHA, Veterans Healthcare Administration. Now, before you even ask me the question, Dwayne, do VA Raiders approve this? No. VA Raiders fall under compensation under VBA, Veterans Benefit Administration. This program is under VHA, okay? So I'm going to take you to the VA's website and show you what they're talking about. Let's get it. Okay, so I'm going to put the link of this website in the description section so you can go through and look at the entire a website. I am not going to go through all of it. I'm just going to highlight some of the most important parts of this. Okay. So here we go. The program of comprehensive assistance for family caregivers says we recognize the important role of family caregivers in supporting the health and wellness of veterans. Okay. Now, question Am I eligible for the program? of comprehensive assistance for family caregivers. Okay, I always just call it the caregiver program, all right? So it says you may be eligible if you and the veteran you're caring for meet all of the requirements, all. So two key words, may and all in that sentence. You may be eligible. Now, let me tell you what's not part of the criteria. Oh, I think I should be granted the caregivers program because I wore the uniform. And wrong. That is not part of the crowd. Part of it, but it doesn't break it down that way in on their website, okay? Two, I'm in need of assistance. You could be, but there's other criteria that you need to meet, and we're going to go over that, all right? So, eligibility requirements for the family caregiver. You must be at least 18 years old. At least one of these must be true for you. One of these. One not all. You're a spouse, son, daughter, parent, step family member, or extended family member of the veteran, or you live full-time with the veteran, or you're willing to live full-time with the veteran if we designate you as a family caregiver. Now, there's no gray area for that. They're telling you exactly you, the caregiver, who it has to be. That's it, okay? Eligibility requirements for the veteran. All of these must be true for the veteran you're caring for. So all four of these bullet comments that they have, the veteran has to meet each one. The veteran has a VA disability rating, individual or combined, of 70% or higher. Okay, we already, already know that 70% for PTSD, okay, or Individual, that's 70% for PTSD or combined. For example, 50% for migraines, 50% for sleep apnea, 40% for the back, 10% for both knees, 10% for tinnitus, okay? So as a combined, you will be rated 70% or higher for that example I just gave. The veteran was discharged from the United States military or has a date of medical discharge, okay? So they're talking about active duty service members there, all right? The veteran needs at least six months of continuous in-person personal care services. Now, I'm going to drop a nugget, and this is just me when I was doing research on this. I thought about this. If you have a primary care physician at the VA hospital, or if you don't, okay, yours may be private. It might not be a bad idea to have that private doctor to write a letter stating who they are, 
how long they've been treating you, and the veteran needs at least six months of continuous in-person personal care services. Now, I don't know this for certain, but when they say six months, I'm like, hmm, are they going to reevaluate this veteran caregiver after six months? I would probably be proactive and on that fifth month, have that doctor write another letter. The veteran continues to need an additional six months of continuous in-person personal care services or 12 months or whatever. Okay. Let's keep going. The veteran needs to be enrolled in the VA healthcare. Okay. So you got to be enrolled before you can apply for this because they're telling you this is one of the eligibility requirements. Let's keep going. What are personal, what are personal care services? They include care or assistance to support these parts of the veteran's life, health and well-being, everyday personal needs like feeding, bathing, and dressing, safety protection, or instruction in their daily living environment. Now, this sort of reminds me of that SMCL, okay, which is separate. You can have SMCL and get this caregiver, but you'll see a little bit later, this monthly stipend goes to the dependent, not the veteran. SMCL under benefits that goes to the veteran. Okay. But on that 2680, they're asking some of these same questions. So in that letter from your primary care or that private doctor that says that uh, stating you need six months of continuous care. Now I'm not saying that's a requirement, but that's a nugget from me because you want to be proactive, right? I already have that letter. So that, they don't have to ask you for it. Also, in that same letter, you can put all three of these bullet comments and expand on it. How does a veteran need help feeding? Is it some type of neuropathy where they can't hold a fork or cut their uh, own food? Bathing. Maybe they have some lower extremity issues where they cannot stand up in the shower. Dressing. They may need help getting their, uh, putting their shirts or pants on. Okay, Things of that nature. The doctor can explain, especially if the, uh, your doctor has been treating you for a few months or even a few years. OK, let's keep going. How many caregivers can the eligible veteran appoint one primary two secondary family caregivers? OK, do not get this confused and say, oh, Dwayne, what about this? What about they're telling you right here? OK, don't overthink it. What benefits can eligible primary and secondary caregivers receive? Okay. Education and training, mental health counseling, travel, lodging, financial assistance. Eligible primary care caregivers may also receive these benefits, a monthly stipend. Okay. And I went on the VA's compensation rate table and they didn't say what that amount uh, is. But when you get to that point, you apply and you're talking with the person that's going to prove it, ask them. Ask them, how much is it? Is it a tier like tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four? If you're given tier one, you get, I don't know, 900 bucks. If you're tier two, you get 1800 bucks and go up from there. You have to ask that question, okay? How do I apply for this program, okay? So it says you can apply online, by mail, or in person. That's a decision that you're going to have to make. Again, I'm putting this link to this uh, website, VA's website, in the description section. So you can come down here, you and your caregiver, you can apply online. You, here's the form, a VA form 10-10CG. You can download it, complete it, mail it. And then it says you can apply in person. Bring your completed VA form to the caregiver support team at your uh, nearest VA medical center, okay? Now, this is where you want to go to va.gov and look up the location. Do you have an outpatient clinic close to you? Or there's a VA medical center that's closer, okay? And it goes on to say you can find a caregiver support team in one of these ways. See, they're giving you this information. Click on that link, and it'll take you to the caregiver support program team directly. I'm not going to click on that link, but again, I have the link to the description in the description section of this video. You can call the 800 number, 
Okay, and they're telling you Monday through Friday, 8 to 10. Wow, 8 to 10 p.m. Saturdays, 8 to 5. Okay, that's shocking. Don't send medical records along with your application. Okay, that one letter I was talking about, that's just one letter. Okay, they're talking about all this information like you, like some veterans try to send to VBA for their compensation. Okay, just keep that in mind. All right, now what documents can I submit if I'm signing this application on behalf of a veteran? There you go. Any of these documents. Oh, you can submit one. They're telling you one, not all, but one. All right. Then also what happens after I apply. Okay. So there, obviously, once you apply, someone's going to get a hold of you. Hopefully they do. And just don't deny the application outright. I had talked to a couple of veterans prior and they said that they had an interview and they would ask certain questions. They came to the house and they asked certain questions. Okay. So I'm not going to go any further, but there's more information towards the bottom of this. So you just want to make sure if you or you, you or the veteran or caregiver, or another veteran you may know that need these services, share this link with them. Take the time, invest the time to go through the entire page. I didn't go all the way down to the bottom. There was some additional information. I just wanted to cover the highlights of this, okay? So if you feel you qualify according to the VA's eligibility, go for it, okay? Go for it. Now, another thing that I've been told by certain veterans is the person that they talk to is the social worker on the veterans team at the VA hospital, okay? You can go to My Healthy Vet, email your primary care physician, or even the nurse and say, hey, who is the nurse? But they gave you a link that you can go to the directory as well, all right? So it could be easier just to talk to your nurse on your team and get a hold of a social worker or click the link and look at the, look at the, go through the directory, I'm sorry, go through the directory and see if they have contact information for you there, okay? So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and as always, do not forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.